26 rounds per minute, multiple rounds simultaneous impact, full armor protection, shoot and scoot. Are we talking about the Paladin, the PZH-2000 or another artillery system of the 21st century? No, we are talking today about a very incredible mortar system. Plain good old mortars and on this particular platform either tracked or wheeled. It is the Amos folks and this is another vehicle that has been requested quite highly on my channel. Not just any old mortar though, this is one of the newest systems to come out of Finland. The advanced mortar system, or AMOS for short, has been in procurement and design and development for quite some time in both tracked and wheeled platform. And today we're going to go over its overall specifications, some of the features, how it came to be, and then finally my personal opinion on it. But before we talk about this wonderful vehicle, we need to talk a little bit about close fire support, which will be very important on future battlefields as it always has been. The infantry's own artillery consists of the 81mm or the 120mm barrel loaded mortars. In most cases these are towed weapons and need quite a bit of time to set up. The crew is very vulnerable at that point folks and they are out in the open. There have been attempts to give crew and weapons some protection but really it's only had limited success. The open topped M106 versions of the M1113 gave the mortars the mobility needed to get out of the battlefield danger area as quickly as possible. Still, the large open hatches necessary for barrel loading made the crew stand out in the open, not only to infantry fire for potential exposed return fire from indirect attack. Several attempts in the 1990s gave the reliable mortar real armor protection. The Mortar Under Armor, or MUA, was born. The Saudi National Guard chose a single barreled 120mm system, but Western armies do not seem to be quite interested in that. Finland had broken the reluctance by introducing the revolutionary AMOS. The weapon system is designed and built by Alvis Hauglands, and I can't say it, and I'm sorry I've tried looking everywhere and asking people how to say it, but it's from Sweden. And while the Finnish company Patria makes the turret, the joint company of Patria Haglunds uh, does the marketing of the entire system. The short listing of the AMOS for the US Army Future Combat System Mortar makes a closer look at the system worthwhile, however we're not going to touch on that today. The fully armoured turret is pretty much what the AMOS system is, and has the same protection as the vehicles on which it is mounted. All combat vehicles that can have a turret ring of 2.3 meters are capable of carrying the AMOS system. Remember the AMOS system is the mortar system itself, not the vehicle. The weaponry itself consists of two 120mm smooth bore mortar tubes mounted side by side in a turret. It can fire all kinds of existing 120mm smoothbore ammunition, including assisted rounds and the future precision guided mortar munitions. The automatic loader holds 30 rounds in the turret. Another 14 special rounds are also stored beside it. The hull storage depends on the vehicle and the course of the customer's wishes, which can be variant between every different type of vehicle out there. The weapons have an elevation of minus 3 unto 85 plus degrees, which is a really good elevation for this particular kind of weapon system. The complete system, laying system, ammunition stowage and fire control, navigation and communication systems are fitted with inside the AMOS turret. All the carrying vehicle has to provide is hydraulics and pneumatic connectors, keeping modifications to the original vehicle at an absolute minimum, which is a very, very good feature of this particular setup. The Finnish army mounts the AMOS on another local product, the Patria XA203 6x6 APC, which I will be doing a vehicle review on in the future. This system has also been tested on the CV-90 tracked combat vehicle which you are seeing in this footage. Because, well, I'm a tracked guy so you're always going to look at tracked vehicles before you're going to see wheeled. It has shown that it does not matter what vehicle is used, the system will perform very, very well. The AMOS is fitted with a state-of-the-art navigation and targeting system. The ballistic computer will make all necessary computations for the fire mission. The tubes are then laid onto target using that data within seconds and the rounds are on their way to the target area. Using two 3,000mm long tubes fitted with an automatic loader gives this weapon an impressive rate of fire of 26 rounds per minute using ammunition from the turret stowage. When loaded from the hull, the stowage system will still fire 16 rounds per minute. When on the move, the AMOS can start firing within about 30 seconds from stopping, letting the first four rounds out in less than 8 seconds, which is pretty impressive. The vehicle then drives off immediately after the rounds are fired with the shoot and scoop maneuver which if you've seen many of my other videos on artillery pieces you know it is imperative to have that shoot and scoop maneuver to be effective on the battlefield. Even though the risk of counter battery fire on the position is very real, the crew however folks is safe and that's a key imperative when it comes to return fire and being able to put rounds down range quickly and protect the boys inside from counter artillery attack. 
Using the automation build into the Amos, the concept of the multiple rounds simultaneous impact is available. With this system, one vehicle can put 14 rounds on target within several seconds, making it sound and feel like a massive barrage coming from only one vehicle. The first rounds are fired almost vertical and it will take 75 seconds to the target. The tubes are then lowered and more rounds are fired at small angles and charges and therefore shorter flight times, with the last two taking only 15 seconds. Even before the rounds detonate, the vehicle is already driving away from the firing position. This allows for the enemy to be absolutely overwhelmed with firepower, but at the same instance believing that there is a huge battle group of artillery lying and lurking somewhere, where overall it's probably just three or four of these Amos vehicles punching rounds down range. Another possibility is the direct fire mode, where the tubes are horizontally fired at a target. The mortar rounds have no armoured piercing capability, obviously, against hard targets, but it can still be very devastating to bunkers and infantry targets. It can be used in a very similar way to the M928 CEVs of the 165mm gun that was used by the engineers. Choosing this family of vehicles very carefully that it can carry more than just infantry and automatic weapons is really paying off. The Amos, however, can be fitted to almost all vehicles chosen by today's armies, including the beautiful Striker. One turret was even tested on the Swedish Combat Boat 90 and fired successfully at targets on shore. It will be tested on the new Swedish Combat Boat under development. Certainly, it will have the edge over the new open-topped version coming soon into service. The added weight of this turret, 4.4 tons, will bring the combat weight to the Striker of 16.5 tons. The only drawback is that the Striker Amos cannot be transported in a C-130. However, two can be flown by a C-17 and three by a C-5 according to the manufacturer of the vehicle. So once again, I found some footage from the manufacturer of this vehicle that can really give us a bit more of a broad overview of exactly how the vehicle operates and the kind of features it has. So let's take a look at it. The SSG-120 is a joint Nordic program developing a 120mm armoured mortar system for the future combat environment. The focus is on meeting interoperability and net-centric warfare requirements. The active partners are Sweden and Finland with Norway and Denmark as observers. The Swedish project organizations made up of teams from the armed forces and the Swedish Defence Material Administration, with Swedish and Finnish contractors jointly designing the carrier and turret. Initially, the armed forces have opted for a carrier from the Combat Vehicle 90 family of vehicles, a successful concept with a great deal of built-in know-how gathered when developing the earlier system. Its military name is Mortar Combat Vehicle MCV 90 -120. The mortar turret contains everything required for fire emission and is adapted for carriers both on land and at sea. The project teams are working on such questions as the system's final key capabilities and tactics in parallel with practical tests. The test vehicle is manned by four soldiers, a commander, a gunner, a loader and a driver. The commander and gunner sit in the turret. The commander directs operations on board and communicates with other units within the battalion. The gunner aims and fires the mortars with the help of an advanced command and fire control system. At the rear of the vehicle, the loader handles the ammunition within close reach. The driver sits at the very front of the vehicle. The SSG-120 can use existing mortar ammunition, but new types of ammunition are in the process of being developed. In all, about 80 rounds are carried, some of them in the turret magazine. The resupply of ammunition takes less than 15 minutes. 
The SSG-120 can fire different types of ammunition at several types of targets. A precision-guided munitions with the capability to combat main battle tanks is a vital component of the system. With its tactical mobility and firepower, the vehicle meets the modern battlefield requirements for indirect fire support. The plan is to incorporate four vehicles per armoured battalion. They'll normally operate two by two and are adapted for both national and international operations. The vehicles are equipped with an advanced navigation system for positioning and have full night vision capability. The MCV-9120 is commanded by a battlefield management system. A display shows the commander, the battalion's unit's positions and how combat's progressing. The fire control system receives target positions digitally from other units in the battalion and automatically calculates how the barrel should be aimed. The targets presented graphically on a digital map after which the barrels are automatically aligned. The gunner informs the loader of the requested ammunition type. The commander checks target data and gives the firing order. The first four rounds can be launched within five seconds. MRSI, multiple rounds simultaneous impact, involving multiple firing of rounds with different charges and elevations, the simultaneous impact can be affected with up to 14 rounds. The system has a range of about 10 kilometers and a maximum rate of fire of 20 rounds a minute. The MCV-9120 is already showing great potential and will meet the armed forces' need for improved indirect fire support capability, both in national and international operations. It will be fielded by the armed forces maneuver battalions during 2008. Well, there it is in its glory, the 120mm dual-barreled AMOS turret system. Honestly, folks, uh, I would really love to see this in Canada. We have recently just bought the TAP V, and I will be doing a video on it in the future. But in terms of strategic capability on the battlefield, these vehicles are a game changer. We are talking about 120 millimeters of firepower being able to put downrange very quickly and in a controlled vehicle environment, which basically means that the crew are completely protected. I love the fact that it is tracked and wheeled, and I think Canada could definitely benefit from having a quick reaction force mortar system such as the AMOS. The most fantastic thing about the AMOS system, other than its firepower and the ability for it to uh, perform very well in an artillery setting, is the fact that it's interchangeable with many different vehicle platforms. Meaning that if Canada really wanted to, we could put this thing on our vehicles very easily. The same for the Americans with the Striker, which they're still looking into doing. The AMOS system is very capable of being able to provide a lot of support to infantry or armoured battle groups with 120mm of firepower. Not only that, but it provides excellent direct fire support in case there is an engagement to the vehicle or its troops around it. Um, and yes, it doesn't have an armoured piercing capability, but that's not what it's there for. You can imagine this vehicle coming under contact or a convoy of these vehicles coming under contact by an anti-tank team for such. And yes, they may have taken out a couple of vehicles, but at the end of the day, this vehicle can return fire onto a firing position at least and really cause some damage. And that is something I think is really important to look at with this vehicle. Also, it's not like when you're towing down a truck, uh, you know, with a mortar on the back of it, you can set up this vehicle in a direct fire support. It's just not going to happen. So another interesting attribute I think this vehicle has to offer. So I know I haven't talked about the Patria wheeled vehicle of this uh, weapons platform, but at the end of the day, it's not the vehicle that I'm focused on primarily. It is the weapon system of the turret itself and 
I think, in a general basis, this thing has a lot to offer, and I really do hope armies and armed forces around the world implement it into their strike forces, because ideally that's what this weapons platform is for. It is there to get rounds down range very quickly, and quite a punch, folks. 120mm mortars, I find, will always have a place on the battlefield, uh, not only taking out infantry support, but also some really thick-skinned vehicles. 120mm rounds, that's a big round, folks, so definitely still has its place on the battlefield, and I hope Amos continues into the future to be uh, supported to all forces around the world that have the capability to do so. It's a game changer guys, quick, reliable, fast artillery support to the troops. I'd love to hear your opinion on this uh, weapons platform folks, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, you know, those artillery operators who have used this weapon system, please let me know, I would love to hear your opinion on it. Um, being that this is fairly, um, you know, different concept of artillery platforms that we're used to, you know, mobile artillery from a mortar system. Uh, I'd love to hear everybody else's opinion on it and where you think it's going in the future. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about the AMOS system. I know it's been a much requested video for me and my channel. Uh, if you'd enjoyed it, leave me a like and a comment about what you thought of the video and the vehicle. And if you want to support my channel, I would really, really appreciate you go check out my Patreon page. Uh, it is in the description box below. Go check it out. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All the best and bye-bye.